Baker. Ox Baker, is this a friend of yours, Gary Hart? No association with Ox Baker. I've known him for a long time. Without a doubt, one of the most deadly men in professional wrestling, as you just heard. Just put uh, Blackjack Mulligan out of commission for a while. He's the only man that I know that's still existing in professional wrestling that has literally killed two men. Two men died in the ring wrestling Ox Baker from the heart point. As we watch Ox Baker against Ken Massey, Gary Hart, I also found out through my connections, you know I have very many also, that H and H Associates through Armand Hussein have acquired the service of Kamala. Is that right? Why do you want to ask me a question like that out here on air? Ask me something like that later when we're not on air. I'm not answering the question. Well, I, I, you know, I also, when I heard this, I contacted Skandor Akbar, and he says the only thing he would say is they stole him. I'm not making any comments on Kamala, Arman Hussein, Akbar, or myself, and this isn't the proper place of the time, and I will talk to you about it later, but not on air. Well, I will continue to investigate this matter, and I promise the people I'll have more on it, if not today, next week. Fox Baker, what a mean-looking character. Look at him. Oh. Like I said, uh, he is one of the few men that actually exist in wrestling at the present time that from a move exactly what he's doing now where he actually put two men to death and i don't want to harp on it but that's a fact that uh, he's the only uh, wrestler that's competing and he's here in texas all-star and he usually goes into the area where uh, the biggest and the best stars are at because he likes making his reputation hurting people he told me one time he said every time somebody passes on when they're wrestling me i just hear dollar signs well, Ox Baker, as he works on the face of Ken Massey, a lot of news has been taking place as far as Texas All-Star Wrestling is concerned. First of all, I want to tell all you fans in Odessa that Texas All-Star Wrestling on the road will be there this coming Tuesday, the 18th, at the Exeter County Coliseum. Come on out, the whole TV crew will be there. And Bruiser Brody, the winner of the Texas Cup, and everyone last week uh, saw the presentation of the Texas Cup uh, at the Hemisphere Arena. Bruiser Brody defeated over 82 men, the biggest tournament ever held in professional wrestling, and Texas All-Stars' very own Bruiser Brody is the first holder of the Texas Cup. Well, Ox Baker locks onto the side ahead of Massey. The referee, Manuel Villalobos, makes him break. Ox Baker puts Massey in the corner, and let's see what Ox Baker's going to do as we watch. Oh, he throws that fist into the midsection. What this uh, referee should do is stop this match because it's not competitive. Uh, this man has no chance against Ox Baker. Let me say this to all you fans out there watching. You that saw was the heart points. That was there it. There it is. It There's the right heart points. Here and Indian Chief Wahoo McDaniels. This match took place in the same Eastern Coliseum on July 12th. Your referee is Carl Fergie. My name is Peter Burkholton. You're seeing Wahoo McDaniels even after 15 minutes of a hard battle with the world champion charging at Ric Flair. The entire match, Wahoo McDaniels was the aggressor. He was the man kept going after the champion. The champion kept trying to slow down the Indian attack. He was successful on some occasions, but only temporarily because Wahoo kept coming. Because Wahoo is searching for a dream. He is driving for a dream. A dream to become the world's heavyweight champion. A dream that he hopes someday to fulfill. Now, Ric Flair is using the ropes. You'll see a good shot of it in just a few seconds. There it is as Ric Flair was trying to use that extra leverage to keep Wahoo's shoulders to the mat. Free Carl Fergie caught the champion in the act, and now he is lecturing the champion on the consequences of he trying such maneuvers. But a give and take, all match. Wahoo McDaniels trying to become the world's heavyweight champion. He gets an excellent opportunity this coming Friday night, Sam Houston Coliseum, when he gets the ordered back return match between he and Wahoo McDaniels and the world's heavyweight champion, Ric Flair. Wrestling officials across the country and world are excited about the possibilities of Wahoo becoming the new champion. The box office potential of Wahoo as a champion. Uh, but you've got to talk, when you talk about box office potential, you've got to talk about the records that Ric Flair has set as well. Two hard, competitive veterans to be battling it out for the biggest prize in professional wrestling. Now, Wahoo chopping one right after another. But Flair comes back, and when he does, he explodes. Both men.
Working to the rover, Ric Flair sending Wahoo, but Wahoo reversed it. And there's a move that worked well for Wahoo, and he slaps that sleep hold on him. And Wahoo's got the world champion in that sleep hold. And Wahoo holds on, and he pours it to him, keeping the squeeze on, keeping the pressure. Referee Carl Fergie watching closely to make sure that that does not become a stranglehold, that Wahoo keeps the pressure around the chin and the side of the neck, and not a chokehold. Flares down on one knee. Wahoo continues the pressure. Remember these same two men battle for the world title this Friday night on the same night that has a steel cage battle for the tag team title and belt. The same night that shows Bill Watts and Hacksaw Jim Duggan up against Zambu and Kamala. The same night you're going to see 26 wrestlers. The greatest card of 1985. And one of the reasons is what you're watching right now, the return match between these two superstars. Wahoo trying to pin. He's hoping that by keeping Flair's shoulders to the mat and keeping the pressure on, he may be able to keep Flair down for that three count. Fergie very closely. When a referee officiates a world title match, he's extra cautious because he knows so much is on the line. Wahoo caught the referee. Carl Fergie wasn't able to get out of the way of Wahoo. Flair threw Wahoo right into the referee. Carl Fergie is down. Rick Flair is down. Wahoo now not aware of the fact that the referee is down. He brings Flair up by the hair. Flair uses that knee, looking for a place to throw him, and over the top rope. Now, right then and there, the match should ended with a disqualification. The referee didn't see it. Wahoo would have won the match, but he would not have won the world title. But Wahoo now finding that ring post, that metal ring post, a tough obstacle as Flair drove his face into it. Wahoo, I mentioned before, he at the champion. Despite the punishment, despite whatever Flair threw at him, Wahoo continued to move closer and keep the pressure on the champion. Drop by the elbow, Rick Flair now. The referee's not there to count. Wahoo now off his back as Flair now realizes that the referee is down, continues his chop. Wahoo continues to prove that he can take. He can take whatever the champion has, and this is Wahoo's move. Right there, that backslide. Flair is down. Flair is down for a long time. The referee comes over. We nearly had the three count, and if the referee would have been over there in time, we would have had a new world champion. Wahoo McDaniel knows that now, and so do the thousands and thousands of wrestling fans that jam-packed the Coliseum that night. Wahoo now, gaining momentum. Wahoo turning into the Indian Chief that has made a trademark and made himself a legend throughout the wrestling world as he comes across that Indian war dance. Chop, that slashing chop of his across the cut-up head of Ric Flair. The world champion's in trouble. He's into the corner. Wahoo continues the, the attack, and as he chops him one right after the other, the referee continues to try to break him up, and Wahoo... Hasn't stopped yet as he knows he is getting close. He's getting so close to that world's title. He pushes the referee out, not knowing the position of the ring. The referee goes over the top rope. Wahoo was not concerned with the referee. He was concerned on beating the world's champion. And he's on top now. There's no referee. He's out of the ring. Flair is down. Wahoo's on top. Now Wahoo starts to get the news of the fact that he has lost on a disqualification. Big Bubba and the Zambui Express. This is one of the semifinals of the six-man Texas Tag Team Tournament that has been going on throughout the state of Texas. Those finals once again at the Freeman Coliseum San Antonio on Sunday the 12th. Seven teams will be in the finals and will crown a new Texas six-man tag team champion. Be there. The cameras of Texas All-Star Wrestling will be there. Oh, the sound boy runs in the Kabbalah. Big Bubba, get out of the way. Here's the one-man gang is tagged in now from Hall Fifth Street, Chicago, and the fans say, moon, moon, moon. Look at the moon. Tags out to Bobby Duncan. The moon holds the Zambui Express. Duncan is in swinging. 
Coming up, ladies and gentlemen, a cage match. Chris Adams, Scott Casey, that's our main event today. You don't want to miss it. And next week, the American Force will be putting on their Texas tag, uh, excuse me, their Asian tag team titles on the line as the Asian Cup will be up. The American Force against Killer Brooks and Austin Battle in our big main event next week. We'll find Kamala, the Ugandan giant you see him in the ring against Bruiser Brody. That's Bruiser Brody and Kamala next week right here on Texas All-Star Wrestling. Oh, I don't know anywhere you can go and catch the excitement of professional wrestling the way you're getting it from Texas All-Star Wrestling 86. The Ugandan giant pounding at Bobby Duncan. Duncan with some forearms knocks the Ugandan giant back on the rope. Here comes a one-man gang chasing General Skandor Akbar and Zambu Express intercepts him. They're fighting outside the ring. Inside the ring, it's Bobby Duncan and Big Bubba. As now, Hacksaw Higgins makes his way out in. He hooks up with Bobby Duncan there over the corner. One man gang has made it back up on the apron, and so has the Zambui Express. Here comes the Zambui Express in now, and here comes the one man gang. Big Bubba's in now, and Big Bubba has hold of the Zambui Express. The one-man gang is coming out. Oh, Kamala has got something. He is going after the one-man gang with it. And the one-man gang, it's, it's that whip that the General Skandor Akbar carries. The one-man gang is taking it away from Kamala. The bell is sounding at ringside. There is the Ugandan giant outside the ring with the one-man gang. Bubba is choking the Zambui Express. Duncan hooks up with Axel Higgins, six-man tag team action. Remember, this one, the semifinal match. The finals will be at the Freeman Coliseum on Sunday, the 12th of January. And these teams, at least one of them, will be there, and maybe both of them, because I don't know what the decision this match is going to be. As they fight all over here. The Ugandan Giant is choking the one-man gang. Bubba is there with the Ugandan Giant. This is Bobby Duncan, and we're going to try to get General Skandor. This day, Nightmare is on top. We've got two, but again, Jake shows that ability to come back, not to submit. And believe me, he's had plenty of opportunity to submit in this match. The Paul Driver, Jake, is blocking and reversing. Beautiful reversal by Jake the Snake. Now with a driving knee of his, as fans now start it once again, the chant, DDT, DDT. The whole they have begun to love, and now Humperdinck distracted Jake long enough for the nightmare to flip over Jake. And as he tumbles in, Humperdinck falls in the ring. Outside the ring. Now the DDT chance start up again. Jake the Snake. Better watch out. He didn't see the nightmare behind him. Sir Oliver Humperty. Now the DDT. You saw it. The DDT. We've got Jake on top. This match is history. Once the DDT is applied, they don't come back. Now Jake the Snake. Chance for Hosser of Albany. Humongous. That's humongous who came into the ring. The match is over. Jake the Snake is the winner. But humongous with that devastating mask of his. Driving it in with headbutts into Jake the Snake. And Jake the Snake now is a victim of not just one, not just two, but three men. He's won the match, but it looks like the war has just begun. And Roberts, it topples out, his head cut open. 